Hello, everyone, and welcome to this workshop on the interplay between custom value and transfer pricing. My name is Santiago Ibanez, and we are having this uh, workshop in the framework of the European Common Customs Evaluation Program, which is led by the University of Bologna. Here we have Ben Giacomo Daggio, with the participation of Erasmus University Rotterdam, of the uh, University of Munster, and the University of Valencia. Okay, this program is funded by OLAF uh, in the context of the FQ program. Okay, uh, we are having today presentations by uh, two representatives of each of the member universities. And on top of that, we will have a presentation by a representative of OLAF and by a representative of the Spanish Customs that will come later. Yeah. Uh, and more specifically, <laughs> we will have presentations by uh, Gian Giacomo D'Angelo and Federico Tarini, uh, University of Bologna. We will continue with Jorge Milla and myself from the University of Valencia. Then we will have Guido Modonesi from OLAF. Then we will have Walter De Witt and Martin Schippers from the University of Erasmus Rotterdam. Then we will have Michael Wolfgang and Benedict Wenner from Münster University. And finally, we will have Felipe Martinez from Spanish Customs. So this is the, the program for today. It's going to be a quite an intensive session. We will make a break at the middle of, of the session. And without much ado, I give word to the Italian team. The okay. Can I speak to this? this much? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you everyone for coming and uh, let me also thank Santiago uh, especially for uh, helping me and the most of the people who are in organizing this event. It's not been easy because uh, of the pandemic time and because of communication, uh, or international communication, but uh, we uh, succeeded uh, in, uh, in the end. So, uh, I have 20 minutes, so uh, the team is 20, 30 minutes in the team. Yeah, okay. So, I we prepared some slides, and uh, of course, the slides will be posted on our website. And uh, we, uh, we are first, uh, you know, we try to give you some, uh, uh, an overview of some uh, theoretical issues on uh, the interplays between customs value and uh, transfer pricing. Uh, in my presentation, I will give this overview. I will give you no clear answer. Perhaps your answer uh, does not exist in uh, this field. But uh, we try to sketch out some uh, theoretical issues, theoretical issues uh, on our topic. So let's start uh, with the reality transactions between uh, the third party across national borders are very common. And um, as we all know, both in that small and customer small provider adopt valuation methods for this transaction. And customer small and in uh, income tax rather specific ad hoc methods of evaluation for this transaction. These are to a general extent uh, we may say we may say these are suspicious transactions. Transaction between related parties, cross border transaction with related parties, both for cast small and uh, income tax, uh, and so trust price growth will develop like that. So, uh, for that, important things to highlight is both have specific rules, evaluation rules, but for different operations and competing purposes. That's very important. So that's very important to my mind. Uh, let's start with income tax. Income tax, uh, uh, in income tax, transfer pricing is a legal tool for allocating an state in fair share of profits. It is a matter of allocating the tax base in cross-border, in cross-border uh, uh, value and cross-border in chain value and uh, cross-border transaction. And uh, uh, to general extent, the 
purpose is preventing arbitrage and artificial shifting of the process of free cash. We all know how Trump's price works, and uh, lowering <coughs> of the uh, higher, making higher the uh, transaction value of the national companies try to shift the uh, shift of tax base between one country countries from one country to another country. And so the purpose is preventing the shipping. We all know about the new ICD program of that space rules that prohibit shipping. That purposes uh, also, I don't like to like also on uh, issues from transfer uh, pricing. That's for uh, uh, transfer pricing and income tax. Well, let's let's go directly to the assets value. What's the rationale behind assets value? For transaction values or transactions between related parties. Due to the lack of competing interests in parties, because we assume the parties are related, are part of the same company's group, uh, the transaction value of import in the EU may be lowered in order to diminish customs duties on border. So, so Special, with special rules for customs evaluation, custom values as a clear purpose, avoiding unvaluation of import goods. It's clear. So, we are seeing the competing interests. While transfer pricing is uh, assuming uh, 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 the companies try to lower, try to, hire, to make higher the costs of import, in customs duties, there is an opposite, a competing interest. There is a competing interest in lowering the value of input good. So, it is a uh, competing interest. That's very important, in my opinion. But from a legal, strict legal point of view, according to my opinion, most serious hindrance to uh, an, harmonize, an harmonization between investment value and trust practice in this moment, in the EU, is, uh, from, as I repeat, from a legal point of view, is the fact that custom duties are regulated in Europe by EU law directly, as we know. As we know, customs law is uh, EU law. We have custom code, it's a regulation, a European regulation. So, EU law regulates custom duties. Why? The other part, income tax are regulated by national law. As we know, there are some directives in income taxation, uh, regulating income taxation. There is very abundant uh, case law of the ECJ about direct taxation and not to discriminatory principles, abuse of law, and so on. But in essence, income taxes, so transfer pricing, is regulated by national law. So, uh, uh, that's the main uh, inference, I, I would say, to uh, a complete organization in national law. But uh, uh, I, I will come back to, the, to this point, because it's, uh, this, in my opinion, the legal fundamental point to be addressed. Well, let's go to that. Uh, what's uh, the, what's the value and why? Uh, what, what are the rules on value and why uh, there are differences uh, in essence? Why I do not go too much deep there because Federico will sketch it out. Uh, but uh, the general extent of essence value, the the, right, the rules of essence value so are rules with uh, of Iraq. Order, so there is an hierarchical approach, strict method staged by a, by a legal binding rule, so this is the EU, the, custom, the European Custom Code. While on cross pricing, we have the OECD guidelines, which are generally accepted by all states, all of us side states, uh, but uh, um, OECD guidelines are not legally binding in every country. Uh, I, I, will, I can give you the example of Italy, where uh, there are lots of discussions about the uh, legal force of these guidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some, uh, some judges who also at the highest level 
that dismiss the, the, the legal value of this uh, uh, OECD guideline for transfer price, affirming that uh, each member state is uh, sovereign in uh, defining the income tax and uh, so the valuation happens in income tax. So uh, that's, that's the first point. And uh, for more, the transfer price rule is more as a more discretional uh, approach. And uh, there are not hierarchical ordered methods, but, but there is a general preference for the most suitable, most appropriate approach to evaluate the, the, the uh, transactions uh, of costs in the concrete case. So, so from one side we have, we have an hierarchical approach with legal binding uh, rules, EU rules, and the other side we have national rules with OECD guidelines, we don't know whether legally binding or not and uh, a, a more relaxed approach, the most suitable, most suitable uh, uh, criterion that should be used to evaluate in terms of price. So that's very, that's a, a big difference, but we really will uh, come back to, uh, on, on this. One of the most important uh, uh, differences in customs value and transfer pricing in the back mm -hmm. is uh, uh, the time, time of evaluation. Uh, for trust pricing, valuation of inventory is normally, normally, near adjustable. It is, uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of the year, it is possible to adjust, to adjust during the tax period, normally one year. During the year, I can adjust as taxpayer. The, uh, the value of the costs. On the other part, and that's very important in my opinion, I think for Michael mm -hmm. and Benedict will come back on this point because timing is very important. Custom uh, um, value relies on an, an instant evaluation. Custom value is declared and affected at the input time, the time of importation. And so, the big issue is retroactive adjustment allowed. I think uh, Mikael and Fanny will address uh, in addressing the amount to address also the previous topic. Uh, I will give you also my opinion about the what's the position of, I will come back to the uh, different uh, law, EU law and national law, and uh, I will give you what's in my, in my opinion is the position of the ECJ about the interplays between uh, uh, the two. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> I will come back to 80s here, uh, famous case of the initial event. In my opinion, uh, the position of the ECJ never changed uh, uh, from that, from this uh, case, from this case, from this attack. The court affirmed the, the clearly, clearly affirmed the autonomy of customs law from uh, national law. And it clearly affirmed the adjustment of imports value according to European customs law cannot be used by member states or other national forces. For so, according to the ECJ in the Venetia then, but we also affirm in the following case law, there is an autonomy of customs law, and that customs law valuation cannot be used for other national purposes, also fiscal purposes. So, according to ECJ, it is not possible from the European perspective using EU customs value rules to adjust national, to adjust transfer pricing or for other national purposes. That's a very clear position of the ECJ, <laughs> I, I, I think. And it also, I think, echoed in, to some extent in Amamatsu this position. Let's move on. So, uh, what's the natural outcome of what I've just, just said? Uh, 
but so far, kingdom tax and casting duties are popular words. Uh, so, uh, one, one, one may ask me at this point, uh, uh, why did you, why did you organize this seminar on the interplace of, uh, on the Cassin's value and uh, income tax? Well, uh, I, I studied a little bit of uh, quantistic physics, or at least the uh, parallel words theory, and uh, I found that uh, in this quantistic physics theory, uh, it is permitted, uh, it is contemplated the, the uh, possibility that uh, two parallel words sometimes overlap. So, um, what's important in quantistic physics uh, uh, theory uh, it is that uh, when two parallel words overlap, they may share as a piece of reality. But the important thing is the reality should be the very same. Reality. There should be no contradiction. The common part should be very simple, and there should be no contradiction. So let's uh, let's move on and find out what's uh, the uh, same reality, and uh, we should admit that in practical terms, the two evaluation results are often very similar. Because both common value and transfer price in resort to the arm's length principle. I, uh, I do not go deep down in this, but uh, uh, in practical terms, uh, two evaluations are not so different. So, because the customs evaluation of first method and the secondary methods uh, uh, tend, to, uh, tend to reach out to the same. Evaluation result, uh, results of transfer price. Even often relying on administrative internal rules. But, so, if in practical terms the results are more or less the same, what's wrong? First, I, I, I try to sketch out what's wrong. Alignment cannot be considered for grant in every case because uh, administrative practices matter. It is not legally binding, but it is uh, uh, it relies, this uh, coordination relies on administrative practice. Dealing with two sets of rules, procedure is time and resource consuming. We all know that. Uh, we have to be aware that in most countries there are two separate administrations for customs law and for tax law, that's very important. And dealing with the two administrations may be a result very time consuming and uh, resource consuming. Third, most important, timing of evaluation is often unaligned, unaligned. And this may lead to mismatch. For example, as I just said, a redirecting adjustment of time value is not. Well, but I will come back. I'm a lawyer, and so I try to uh, frame all, all problems in uh, uh, in the uh, in a general in a general uh, legal frame. What's at stake from a legal point of view? There are some principles we should refer to, and. Uh, I tried to sketch out this uh, certainty for law, avoiding it, and the sort of corollary of certainty for of law is avoiding contradiction in the law in the overall tax system. There should be a sort of coherence in the overall tax system. We do not accept different, uh, uh, a very different evaluation for the same uh, transaction. Namely, when the transaction, when the transaction, when the valuation ends after detecting the arm's length principle, the same. Okay. So, there is a uh, general principle, a general means of coherence in the system, in the price system. Or more, there is a proportionality principle, and so provision of uh, unnecessary 
of predictions. So we, we as we have seen, the uh, procedure is time-consuming and resource-consuming, uh, and uh, perhaps, perhaps some uh, unnecessary complication in dealing with two or two administrations, and so the proportionality principle and, and mm. for a sort of corollary of, for, of proportionality principle is the prohibition of, of unnecessary complication. Mm. So according to uh, applying these uh, principles, we may, uh, we may uh, sketch out a solution to this. But, uh, to this problem. But there is another further arising interest, and I think Diego will uh, give us some details on that. Uh, transfer pricing for tickling the custom probes. We may transfer pricing evaluation be used to protect custom probes, as we know. In the year 2004, the ECG allowed custom value adjustments for the two similar products methods, that is one of the most important methods for transfer pricing. Even without calling into question the authenticity of the invoices, the bank transfers, and other documents. And that's very important because we also link this to the documents, documentation, and some uh, special schemes to be uh, to be. Uh, uh, and go to be uh, a third or two to uh, address this issue, and I think about her and uh, can give some uh, further details on the administrative practice, administrative, um, administrative documentation on this point. Well, uh, I'm about thinking, what's the ideal solution for bridging the gap? The ideal reaching the gap from uh, from price pricing to customs value. The ideal solution is a legal link, legal binding link, and that's the U.S. approach, as we all know. As we all know, Section 1059 of the uh, code, the tax, the Inland Revenue Code. Uh, it, it creates a, a legal link. What import between the related parts of the course? Custom value is a maximum for the valuation of inventory for tax, for tax purposes. If in the US, uh, there is a clear connection, legal binding connection between the two. The amount of customs value is the maximum used for tax pricing. That's the US approach. It's very clear, it's a clear cut approach. Then there is a sort of national approach. Uh, the value set was agreed for first, often the custom value for the timing is binding on the other, a stoffel or bona fide principle. And we are in Spain, and the, uh, in Coca Cola cases, the Tribunal Supremo, the Tribunal Supremo of Espana in, uh, in 2009 approved this uh, principle, this theory of link the two. So the first the first link the first links we, we may we may say this. But uh, I'm quite finishing these solutions uh, are uh, uh, feasible in EU well uh, in principle uh, yes in principle this both these solutions are good. But we should consider the link should be contained, contained in a new act regulated income tax law, regulating income tax law, and ideally an EU directive. And we all know that the entire taxation unanimity is required. So, feasible, yes, in principle, but we all know that in, that in, uh, in the field of direct taxation, so lots of political troubles. So we have 27 countries in the uh, EU and 27 uh, countries that have veto power on, uh, on the uh, direct taxation issue. So, I believe, mean, yes, it's possible, but not really likely to happen in a short run. 
And how about the interpretive or approach or a, a national approach like in Spain? It will be feasible at EU level in principle, yes, but the stock of safeguard should be endorsed also by the ECJ and not by national law court. But come back to the Shabbat, ECJ is for the autonomy of custom money. So, so let me be skeptical to adopt one of these that seems to be ideal. That seems to be the ideal solution. So, not an easy puzzle to solve. We have lots of discussion to address today. And uh, I thank you for, uh, I stop here. I thank you for your attention. Of course, I'm available for, for questions you would like to ask me. And I give the floor for a, a deepening of the, uh, um, of the interplays of the rules on the interplay to uh, Federico. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So, first of, first of all, I would like to respect my gratitude to everyone for attending this first answer seminar. We hope that this is only the first step on a very profitable dialogue between us, between, uh, all between the academics, between uh, the professional world, uh, between everyone. So, uh, the topic, uh, my topic uh, is the interplay between the transfer price methodologies, the five methodologies um, in the guidelines, and the uh, alternative test uh, methods. As Professor D'Angelo already said, said, in practical terms, transfer price methodologies and the alternative custom valuation method pursue a very similar objective. More precisely, both, both transfer pricing and the custom value aim to determine what would have been the, uh, the transaction value if the simplest transaction would have taken place between two unrelated parties under free market condition. Uh, on, one, on one hand, we have that uh, related party transaction. On the other hand, the uh, unrelated party transaction. This is mainly, roughly, the value. Um, um, a crucial difference which is useful to underline is that uh, in, in the transfer pricing guidelines is uh, called the arm's length principle. principle. In the customer, uh, in the UCC, it's never called the uh, express uh, arm's length principle. It's implied, <laughs> but it's never called the arm's length principle. It's only a comparable between unrelated uh, parties. So, and we said that the, uh, the process by which this is achieved is significantly different uh, because not only the final objective of the evaluation is drastically different, one in the determine, the, determine the, custom, the custom value, the other the correct income or something, but also because there are two different authorities in charge of the evaluation. Authorities that often apply two different set of rules, or always apply a different set of rules. Uh, guidelines or the domestic law and the, uh, the uh, uses. So, to be able to uh, do uh, an effective comparison between transfer pricing and uh, cost of value, custom value, it is useful to briefly analyze both, both cost of value and the transfer pricing separately. So, uh, starting from cost of custom value, the uh, primary the primary method to uh, determine the uh, custom value, sorry for the repetition, under Article 70 of the uh, UCC is uh, the uh, transaction value, which is the price paid or payable for uh, the good, uh, for the relative uh, goods. Uh, however, the alternative method <coughs> that must be applied if the uh, relation between the buyer and the seller remains less the price. Article 7, paragraph 3, letter D, uh, express, expressly say that. Uh, more precisely, Article 7, 7, 
private private free uh, outline some uh, conditions that it must be met if you, if you want to apply the transaction value. However, this is not an automatic uh, mechanism. Uh, the validation, this, uh, the exclusion of the transaction value, is not automatic. In every case, there is a relationship, a relationship between the buyer and the seller, or there is an influence uh, of, uh, by this uh, relationship. In fact, the relationship between the buyer and the seller uh, must be uh, analyzed uh, under the condition set by Article 134 of the Implementation Agreement of the European Agency, which allow the use of the transaction value if the circumstances surrounding the sale and the additional information eventually provided by the card prove that the relationship between the buyer and the seller did not influence the price. So the second paragraph of the same article also states that in any case, the department is allowed to use the transfer of the transaction, transaction value if it can prove that the price paid or payable is in line with one of the values obtained by applying that value. In other words, there is a significant burden of burden proof on the left department, which must prove that the relationship between buyer and seller did not influence the price. Oh, to be more precise, the price is in line with one of the alternative tested values under Article uh, 74, 74 of the UCC. Failing to match this word of approach allow to apply the uh, alternative um, evolution methods under Article 74. Uh, without analyzing in depth every, every uh, method, uh, it's enough to uh, list them. Uh, we have Transaction by identical goods, transaction of similar uh, or transaction of similar or identical good, which the comparison must be performed at the same commercial level, commercial level. Unit, price, unit price method, the computed value method, and the, the full and better option. And, uh, without very, uh, very in depth uh, analysis of the methods, which can say we can say the uh, just a couple of uh, remarks. First, the list laid down by Article 74 is in, in a strict hierarchical order, which means that the custom authorities can move to the subsequent method only if it is not possible to determine the custom value on the basis of the preceding method. The, we can move down the method only if the first one is not uh, uh, enough to uh, identify the method. This is very important because we will uh, see a uh, relationship with transfer pricing. Uh, this is not the case in uh, the uh, OCD uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, another key, uh, key aspect in uh, the uh, alternative method of the Article 74 is the main focus. The main focus is not the uh, entire big property of the company, but it's the single transaction. The single import, uh, the single uh, goods, the single, uh, uh, the single one. It's not a, uh, not, not focus on the uh, income, income of the entire, uh, the entire company, the buyer or the seller. So, having been said that, uh, also, uh, also a last key difference, which is more formal than uh, substantial is the, the source of the regulation. In the UCC, as we, read, as we, uh, as we all know, is a legal binding now. Um, the, 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 uh, the, custom, the national custom authority cannot introduce a new criteria, a new alternative method. Now, moving to the transfer pricing, uh, um, the basis of uh, those, rule, those, rule, those rules, as we uh, said before, are laid down in the OSD uh, guideline, a non-legally binding document and national law. Uh, uh, and the, the, the fundamental basis of the transfer pricing is the uh, so-called arms length uh, fit principle. In layman terms, the AGLP uh, requires that the condition of 
the same are the same condition applied between three dependent parties in a similar transaction under similar circumstances. In mm, very practical terms, it's uh, the same. Uh, it's a very very small things that what uh, what is in uh, uh, Article uh, and, um, 34 of the UCC uh, Information the Information Act. Very similar of a relation of similar identical. Uh, uh, another key difference between the uh, transfer pricing regulation in the SD guidelines and the, the UCC code is that the transfer price guideline uh, identifies some comparability factor, some factor that could be used to compare the transaction analyzed by the uh, tax authority and the other uh, transaction uh, under similar uh, Comparability factor of contractual terms, functional analysis, characteristics of, of uh, the product or service, economic circumstances, and the business uh, status. Okay, moving to the actual method, uh, actual transfer pricing method, the guideline identified five different methods. That will be used to, uh, to uh, determine the real uh, transfer uh, price. Those methods are the uh, uncontrolled price method, result price method, or RPM, cost plus method, transaction net margin method, transaction profit split uh, method. The choice of the appropriate method uh, to be used in the case examined by uh, the tax authority is entrusted on a uh, uh, Case by case approach that allow the freedom to choose the method most suitable in every case. For example, in a, uh, in a given case, the uh, taxpayer and the uh, authority could choose to apply the cost loss method even if uh, it, the uh, cost method is uh, applicable for the same. Moreover, one of the key features of process price transfer pricing is the so called retroactive adjustment method. Which allow the taxpayer to request a refund of overpaid taxes, or the tax authority to ask the payment of the underpaid taxes. Yeah, so there is a refund refund mechanism that is, is not explicitly present in uh, uh, cost of value uh, um, We can also uh, in a, a distinction between uh, the uh, two methods. We can uh, we have on one, on one end the traditional transaction method, which includes the CAP, RPM, and the cost plus method, which are methods that analyze the price of the of the transaction, focus on the transaction transaction between the buyer and seller. On the other end, we have the transactional profit method, which includes the PNMM. Yes, and, and that analyze the profit earned by the involved parties and use and generally use when there is no comparable transaction, uh, but there is a general approach to one that not, not always applied because every every other said before there is a case by case uh, approach. So on the one hand uh, we focus on the transaction, on the other hand we focus on uh, the uh, income income of the uh, of the company as a whole. Uh, both transfer pricing and uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. so as I said the, uh, the uh, framework of transfer pricing and, uh, uh, and custom value we can uh, outline some similarities and uh, some uh, difference between the two. Uh, moving uh, starting from the similarity between transfer pricing and custom value is that both Aim to find out the real value of the transaction. What the, the, what is the the, the, value, the effective value of the, the transaction? Uh, on, on the other hand, both transfer price and the custom value ought to compare the transaction value side between the buyer and the seller to the transaction value that would apply between unrelated parties. In practice, this is the um, this is the arms length price. Values of transfer pricing, but it's also relevant to uh, 
uh, to understand that the UCC does not use the term arms length principle and does not explicitly refer to arms length principle. Those are, ten, are two different, uh, two different uh, things. However, it seems that the difference outweighs the similarity. There are a lot uh, on the uh, substantial uh, aspect of those. We have the, the transfer pricing, focus on the, on the profit of the company as a whole, while the, the cash value falls on the single transaction. Also, transfer pricing expressly allow retroactive adjustment, while custom value does not expressly allow retroactive adjustment. I would like to <laughs> underline and underline expressly the term because I think it's very important. Uh, also, the transfer pricing adjustment can take place place after the payment of income, but the custom valuation must take place because the payment of the duties due. On the formal aspect, we have a strict hierarchical relationship between the, the alternative methods for the transfer for transfer by for custom value of goods under Article 74, which allow to apply the subsequent criteria of criteria of only in the previous property applicable. And but the uh, transfer pricing method are chosen in a, a case by uh, well, on a case by case uh, approach. Also, another key difference is the uh, source of the regulation. On the one, on the one hand, we have the uh, OSDA guidelines, which are not legally binding. And there is a key role um, by the uh, domestic law, by the national law. Uh, Custom value, on the other hand, um, limits the uh, power of the domestic law because of, uh, the UCC is, uh, uh, as you already know, uh, a legally binding uh, regulation. So, to, uh, to see if to, uh, to see if uh, there is uh, an effective interplay between transfer pricing and uh, uh, custom value, we must answer, answer uh, three key questions. First of all, can you have a test evaluation taking into consideration a retroactive adjustment? This is one of the uh, key questions. Uh, in the, when I say retroactive adjustment, uh, I mean both upward and downwards. Because mm -hmm. uh, in some states, uh, there is, it is usually they consider only uh, adjustment that determine uh, a, the, a payment of, uh, of another. Uh, part of the duty is already paid. But uh, when I say for retroactive adjustment, I can both upward and down. Second, we have to ask ourselves, is it, is it possible to consider transfer pricing methods the focus on profit of the company as a work for some valuation purpose? This is another key question. Can we allow, if, if we can allow transfer pricing methods the focus on the profit of the company, how can we do no. Allow their adjustment for custom valuation, which focus on, on, uh, on the transaction, uh, on the value of the single transaction. Some suggestion can be found uh, in the ECC policy uh, policy statement of 2012 and the, uh, the World Trade Organization document of 2015 and 2018. But there is no clear cut solution. Last but not least, uh, is, it, is it possible to use transfer pricing data in order to analyze the circumstances surrounding the sale? It, it seems a, a silly question, a question that does not, uh, does not we, we, we do either not have to analyze in depth, but it's very relevant because um, uh, uh, the, if the, um, the car can prove that the, the buyer is in line with the uh, that is the test value, which in line with means it is in line with similar or identical with the price of the similar identical wood, can use the transaction value. And if if I can use the data that prove that my transaction value is in line with the other test value, there is no more question about that also retroactive adjustment. So, in my, in my humble opinion, there is uh, uh, 
the, the solution cannot be found only in uh, the you know, in the uh, left or on uh, to the device of the court of justice. Must be found at the uh, European level, as we already know, this is a obvious conclusion. But first of all, we need to answer answer those questions. Only if we answer answer those questions, we can find a perfect effective solution. Thank you for listening.